Welcome to the macro photography video. Here I can show you a couple of techniques for achieving macro photography. Firstly, using a water drop on your mobile phone, turn it into a kind of microscope. Secondly, the use of cheap clip on lenses, the standard camera macro settings, as well as use of a microscope if you have one. So, firstly, I'm going to have a quick look at the water drop microscope. What I'm going to do first is turn the selfie setting on because the camera is laying on a flat surface, it's pointing upwards, and the water drop is going to go on top. Um, so it's simply a case of putting on a small, clear, clean drop of water on that camera lens and holding an object in front. Now the water droplet does get distorted, um, it moves, and when you press touch the camera, it might shake and jiggle a bit. So you need to make sure that. The water drop is of a nice size, so here I'm applying a bit more water just to make it a bit bigger and rounder. And then I'll be using a timer setting on the camera. So when I press the camera button, um, two or three seconds will go by before the photo is actually taken. And once that's done, it's just a case of carefully cleaning the lens off. This is the photo I took with that. There's been a little bit of post-processing, a bit of sharpening, a bit of contrast just to bring out the colours and tone a little bit more, and in this case a little bit of cheeky lens flare. But other than that is as it would be. It's got a very narrow depth of field, meaning only a tiny bit part of the picture is in focus at any one time, so it's very easy to take the picture in. It's totally blurry. You just have to keep taking more and more. You can do visit the Sammy Ward website, look on the photography section, and you'll find a copy of this presentation with these links here taking you to some other internet examples. These were taken in the same way, and the ruler in the middle is about the same scale as everything else here. So that paintbrush, for instance, is about two centimeters in length. These are just plants taken around the garden. Um, in this case, they've been backlit uh, with the sun coming in from behind or reflecting up through that water drop. Or you could use a torch to shine underneath it as well. Anything you like. When taking a few shots and you're happy with them, it's worth trying a bit more editing on them. In this case, contrast and sharpening as normal, because the pictures do tend to be a touch blurry. You're lucky to get a good sharp image, but they can be quite effective. But in this case, oversaturation make this picture look a bit like a watercolour. This was done in PowerPoint, but you can do the same kind of effect in Photoshop and Photo P. Next on to the clip on lenses. This is a cheap way of adding effects to your phone camera. Nay, a very cheap ranging between the three and three and fifteen pounds. You can easily pay more, but you'll get plenty of lenses at these prices. For three pounds you're gonna get three lenses, a wide angle, a close-up lens, and a macro lens. Um, more expensive set you will get perhaps 10 lenses with different effects on so it's worth looking at. They clip onto most phones as long as the camera is accessible easily from the side of the camera enough for the clip to fit onto um, and you can get lots of good effects from them. The images aren't quite as dynamic as the water drop but they are clean, they are sharp, it doesn't get in quite as close as the water drop but if you look at this image here of the pen when they're zoomed in afterwards you can then close up that way. All of these things are on the scale of about a centimetre across. And this is a normal dandelion. So next, the macro settings on your regular camera. You tend to have the macro setting, which is often a, a flower icon, and sometimes super macro, which will look something like this one here, but it does vary from camera to camera. Traditionally, you couldn't get closer than 30 centimetres or so with a, a regular camera lens, but with digital photography, being able to get into that uh, closer area. And you can produce much more quick and effective range of photography. In this case, 
I've used a simple piece of paper as a backdrop, laid it on the table, propped it up on the book. And by putting an image, in this case, or an item, in this case, the orange onto it, I was able to take a photo and not have any background on. You can see the before and after effects here. Then the only difference between those two oranges is simply the touch of editing, a bit of sharpening, a bit of contrast. But I didn't have to do anything to get any, rid of anything from the background. I've not chopped anything away. I've not rubbed anything out. It's simply the paper. And the same effect happened with these. And especially the strawberry here, there's some very nice sharp detail within it. It looks way more professional than it ought to be, considering I just took it quickly on the dining room table with a sheet of paper underneath. This is also called the infinity wall technique. And if I go backwards, this is the same thing we'll use in the photo studio when taking pictures of people up against the wall. So you don't want to see the um, edge of the wall and carpet behind someone's feet. You have them stood on a big sheet of paper, which goes up to the ceiling. And that gives a sense of infinity. It's the same thing. These were taken outside some while ago, but using your camera in its macro settings, you can get real close up to stuff. Now, some cameras have macro settings, some will have a super macro setting as well. And you may be able to get closer still with them. But this was just taken on standard macro. This wasp was taken last summer. And I like this one, it's got a nice range of tone and colour and detail. Nothing's particularly over or underexposed, and I quite like it. I did take about 10 photos, however, and this is the one that came out sharpest. So that's the thing with this, you just have to take plenty. With students, we often say go out and take 20 or 30 photos. And if you just take multiple shots of the same thing to get it right, you'll be quickly surprised how many photos you will take. You think you've taken about 10 and it turns out you've taken 47. Now, this isn't a super duper macro of a daisy. This was actually quite a large flower. But when you're in that super macro or in that macro area, you tend to get what's called a narrow depth of field and the background goes out of focus. when you're in very close the blurriness happens within the object itself so the parts in this case of a dandelion head or a spider you'll see are sharp and parts are out of focus the only editing done on any of these apart from a little bit of sharpening and a little bit of contrast was to do what's called some dodging and i did this on the face of the spider which was in shadow and i made it so you could see his face this is super macro. This allows you to get even closer. And the lens has a protective, my camera rather, has a protective lens on the front. Um, and it's an, it's an ultraviolet filter. It's a standard thing that all photographers tend to have on their cameras. It means if you bash the front of your camera, that will get broken rather than your lens. And in this case, I just went so close up to these objects that I was almost, if not, touching them. And where I think went out of focus, all of a sudden it came back into focus way clearer. Now the only difference it did is that it made the outside areas go wildly overexposed so you've got this kind of lift effect. That's a bit odd but it does bring out some nice detail real close up. This knot of wood in the fence was done in the same way. Now the potential problem here is because I was up against the flat object is that I can lose the image in the shadow that I create with the camera lens. If you're careful, let some light in from the side, play around with it, you can really get some nice detail. This is just a knot of wood, a bit of sawn wood, that's all the lines on there. But if you look carefully into the crack in that notch, you see these little green tendrils of life coming through. With a normal photo, I just wouldn't have noticed that. Next, the microscope. This is one I just happen to own, times 20 to times 200 microscope. It's powered by USB. You can now get them to connect to your phones, which is a much better way of doing things so you can take it out and about with you. But mine's old. It only connects to a computer. But it gives you two settings, times 20, times 200. You can see with the times 20 setting, in this case, use it take a picture of a pen it's much the same as the water drops it's about the same ability to zoom on that and so you can it's easy just to take pictures of anything close up and a press of a button but what is nice is if you can get it up to times 200 you 
you can see the ball point of this pen in way more detail. Yeah, okay, some of it's blurry. Uh, the colours have gone a bit grainy. But you're seeing things that you normally wouldn't be able to see. And as it says on the text here, using the torch to give you some extra light is beneficial. This is my beard. And it looks a bit like just wire wool or something up close. When you get really close, you can see the structure in there. Again, when you're in really close because of the lack of light, pictures do tend to be a bit blurry and grainy. But it's still interesting seeing that transparent hairs there with the white heart going through the middle of it that I just wouldn't have seen before. And it's quite scary when you put this microscope somewhere on your face and look at the close-up details there. It's much easier though doing things like this. Salt in this case. Salt's worth doing because it has a very regular cuboid appearance within its grains. But why not try some other materials? In this case though, I would use some black paper. In fact, I had some black foam padding and I put the salt on that. And then just playing around with it a little bit, moving things around until I got this picture that wasn't overexposed or underexposed and just right. Lots of nice detail in there, the times 20. But when it went into the 200, and you look at each individual salt grain with all the little cracks and bumps and bumps on them. And there's a few more things. This is a first one is a copper penny piece. The second being a Duracell battery. So it's quite interesting to see with that little plus sign how sharp it looks when you look at the battery but when you get close up you can see it's not at all then the third one there again is a, a daisy and right up close onto the daisy head there so as it says here something just disgusting to end on and why not fruit fly we've got plenty of them around at the moment around the compost heap and one had its demise in the house and i was able to pick it up and have a look it's about two millimeters long on that 200 times and get it up close to the head again it's not in focus but it's disgusting enough so it's worth a go and it'll be worth looking out to see what else you can find so here are the four techniques used for getting macro photography that i've been using over this lockdown period give it a go see what you can do